by the end of watching this video, I'm hoping that you will have a, a little bit more information about um, the variety of measuring calipers for measuring instruments that there are available out there for engineering purposes. So we're going to look first of all at the vernier caliper. Uh, we'll then move on to the outside spring joint caliper. This is another outside caliper, but it's very similar to the inside spring joint caliper. The only difference here is that the legs go in instead of out. Um, this tool here is a divider. We've got two odd leg calipers. We've got a micrometer. And then we've got your standard compass, which is um, also used for, um, for, for measuring, but we'll look out, we'll look further into that later on. So a caliper is a measuring instrument and it is used to measure the distance between two opposing sides of an object, between two legs. The first measuring instrument we're going to look at is the vernier caliper. Now the vernier caliper uh, works on a main scale and a sliding vernier scale which allows the reading to be the nearest or nearest to the um, 0 0.02 of a millimeter. This instrument may be used to measure outer dimensions of an object such as this hollow tube here. So you simply widen the jaws so you know it's definitely wide enough to take the cylinder, the outside edge of the cylinder. You then push this up here with your thumb or here with your thumb, whichever you find comfortable. Followed by a tightening of the grub screw. Then you can remove the vernier, allow the jaws to slide away from the diameter, the outside edge of the tube. And then you can look at the, the slide, this is called the sliding scale, the vernier scale, and this is the fixed scale, the fixed body. So the main body of the vernier is the fixed scale and the part that slides, the sliding jaw is the sliding scale. And if you look at the zero on the sliding scale, the number that the zero is pointing to is the diameter of the, um, the cylinder. The vernier caliper doesn't just read the outside dimensions, it also reads the inside dimensions. And to do that, we use the, the opposite side of where the jaws are, we've just used the opposite side and this time we put the closed jaws inside of the cylinder and then we open by using our thumb on this little thumb groove, this little uh, out dent here. And then tighten the little grub screw, otherwise known as a clamping screw. We can then take out the jaws from the inside of the cylinder. Again, look at the zero on the sliding scale. See, to see what it's lined up to. And if you see what it's lined up to there, the number it's lined up to on the fixed scale. Um, it's 45 millimeters. Okay, so the inside diameter of this cylinder is 45 millimeters. Now the vernier caliper also has uh, the facility to check the depth on objects. So I'll, I'll measure the depth of this cylinder and all I have to do here, make sure the grub screw is released, rest the vernier on the edge, on the top lip, the top edge of the cylinder, then just slide the headstock down until the bottom of this touches the, the floor or the table in this case. And then the shoulders will be resting on the top edge. Again, you look at the zero on the sliding scale to see what it's lined up to on the fixed scale. And it says 140 something, what is it? 
147, just under 147 millimeters. Okay, so that's the Vernier caliper. Um, a few bits of information you might want to know, you might not, I'll tell you anyway. So, this part here is known as the fixed jaw, it doesn't move. This one is the movable jaw, because it does move. These are the measuring tips for external dimension. Um, these are the measuring tips for internal dimension. And again, as I mentioned before, this is the main scale, otherwise known as the fixed scale. This is a clamping screw or grub. Well, it, it is a grub screw, but it clamps the sliding scale into place, moving scale into place. It keeps it still. Um, and then I'll just also note that this, uh, the on the movable scale here is also known as a vernier scale. So the vernier scale is attached to this caliper, which makes it a vernier caliper. This next measuring instrument is known as an outside spring joint caliper. It's an outside spring joint caliper uh, because you can get an outside caliper without this spring mechanism where you can hold the measurement in place by using the threaded rod. There's a little adjustment nut here on a threaded rod, which means that we can keep the measurement exact. So here's how we use the outer spring joint caliper. We close the legs by hand, undo the adjustment nut, and then as you let go, the legs will open because of this spring steel piece at the top. So that's why it's called the uh, the, the spring joint, because that's the joint, that's the spring. It's a caliper and it measures outside. It measures outside of the uh, diameter of the radius of the object. You'll then tighten up the adjustment nut on a threaded bar as so. And you can hear that both legs, the tip, the end of both legs are touching uh, the outside of that cylindrical tube. Um, you then take that measurement, that distance over to your steel ruler. You would measure the distance and it says 51 or thereabouts, 51 millimeters. Um, it's a very good tool and it'll, it will get round quite a lot. So we just look at how far distances that it will measure this particular um, outer spring joint caliper will measure in excess of 150 millimeters. I'd say it'd probably go to 165 millimeters altogether. Um, now, if we look at the similar, uh, similar tool, this is also an outside caliper, but it does not have a spring inside it. It's, it does have a spring at the top here, but that's only to keep the legs still after you've made that measurement in between the two ends there. So if I was to try and measure um, the diameter of this cylinder, I'd have to make sure that the inside of the legs aren't touching against, for example, at the moment the inside of the legs are touching the cylinder, um, now the, the end of the legs are touching the cylinder on both sides. I'll tighten that adjustment nut up and the spring underneath pushes down and ensures that the legs don't move. For when I take the caliper over to the measuring ruler and look at that and it's the exact same measurement, 51 millimeters, exact same measurement as the, uh, the spring jointed version. So to compare the two tools, I would say this one is obviously uh, a lot a lot smaller, it's more manageable for, for portability. Um, this one is, is a lot more accurate and it holds the accuracy because 
of the adjustment nut here and because of the spring joint here is always pushing against that adjustment nut it means it's not going to change uh, it's not going to change the distance here from after you've measured the the object to taking the caliper over to the ruler this one without the spring could move with more potential to move the next tool we're going to look at is the divider so the divider is very similar to your traditional compass um, it came about for the same reason in that they are used for measuring distances and they are a lot more accurate than using just a ruler you could lose a millimeter or two when using a ruler just by looking at the um, the dash incorrectly or a, a shadow overcast in the end of the ruler for example but with this divider all you have to do is set the distance of the legs to whatever you want say we'll say 30 millimeters so when I do this and I walk the divider along every dot is 30 millimeters apart so that when I get to the end here I know that is exactly um, 150 millimeters or 180 millimeters or whatever the distances I need to go up in 30 millimeter increments now this is used uh, a lot of the time for scale uh, scale drawings for map reading ship navigating Traditionally, maybe not so much now with uh, GPS machines, but traditionally that, that's what this divider would have been used for. However, it, it can still be used now um, to do the same sort of thing for scaling down or scaling up any drawings. Uh, the compass, we all know how to use a compass. I won't go into too much detail about that, but other than the fact that it, it did come about at the same sort of time as the divider, and they are used for a similar sort of purpose in the navigational world. So the divider is a similar sort of construction to the outer spring joint caliper in that it has the spring steel top. So you can, again, squeeze the legs like this, which means that the, uh, the, the, the tension on the um, spring here is always the tension being created by this spring steel is always trying to push the legs outwards and then you have the adjustment nut here on the threaded bar which will keep the exact measurement until you decide there is such a thing as the opposite version of these which is the inside spring joint caliper now the inside spring joint caliper and the inside caliper exactly the same as these two apart from and I don't have these to show you unfortunately but the only difference would be the legs come down and stick out a little bit this would be the same they come down and stick out instead of going in they stick out and if you can imagine if the if the legs on this uh, outside caliper were facing the opposite way like this they would be good for measuring the inside diameter of cylinders same sort of thing this will come in and it would go out like a tulip it would go outwards and measure the internal diameter of the cylinder so that would be the inside spring joint caliper and the inside caliper the only difference is that one has the spring one does not have the spring that's what the difference with the spring joint caliper is. A um, couple more tools to look at. We've got the odd leg caliper. And the odd leg caliper is great for drawing parallel lines. So if I wanted to mark a parallel line out along here, a certain distance, I would put this part here where the little notch is, I would put that against the end of the ruler. I would then open this leg up to 20 mil, for example, to make sure that the, the scriber 
is touching the 20. And then, actually I'll change it to 10, so I can do this demonstration. So it's, it's on 10 millimeters now. It's on 10 millimeters now. So all I have to do to make a, a 10 millimeter line along the, the length of this 15 mil bar is you put the, the leg with the notch on the edge of the bar of the of the uh, square box section and just drag it along like this and you are left with a perfect parallel line gives you a, an accurate parallel line as opposed to you measuring 10 mil here measuring 10 mil there then hoping that your ruler is long enough to join those two dashes up the odd leg caliper saves you a lot of time and gives you a much more accurate finish the odd leg caliper has another name the other name is the jenny caliper I'm not too sure why it's called a jenny caliper i'm sure you might be able to come up with your own reasons behind that this is another version of the odd leg caliper so uh the, the leg obviously is is different the finish there at the bottom is is completely different out of the two my preference is to use this one because when you use this one the the tip of the leg there kind of moves and gives you um, a less accurate parallel line Last but not least, is the micrometer. So the micrometer, is, it's micrometer because it gives you really, really fine measurements. Um, and it's great for measuring the diameter, only the outside diameter with the micrometer though. It will not measure the inside, but only the outside. And this particular one, Quite a, it has quite a, a wide neck here on this one. It doesn't go, this bar here doesn't go all the way to that. So we bought this micrometer for measuring um, bars and, and cylinders um, in excess of 22 millimeters up to 30 millimeters. So all of that eight millimeter um, toler or distance that we've bought this for it will give you very fine detail and measurement within that eight millimeters. So the micrometer is used primarily for very, very fine detail and very accurate um, measuring. Okay, so hopefully you have learned enough, a lot, not just a little and hopefully you have enjoyed all this riveting information about measuring instruments so good luck with your instrument and when it comes to measuring if you get stuck please reference this video 